So today is the second day of the Consumer Electronics Show 2021, and that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about Sheldon Adelson, who passed away at age 87 uh, just a few hours ago. Sheldon Adelson was, of course, the founder, CEO, head honcho in charge over at the Las Vegas Sands Corporation. I want to tell you guys a little bit about his story and how it helped build Las Vegas, but this man was absolutely fascinating. And the reason I mentioned the Consumer Electronics Show will actually seem completely clear in just a few minutes, so bear with me. It'll make a lot of sense. How's it going out there, everybody? My name's Steven. I'm not leaving Las Vegas. I'm a Vegas blogger. I hope you guys would like, share, subscribe, hit the bell for the future notifications. I was going to make a video today about something entirely different. It was going to be Steve Sisolak and his... Uh, his press conference he had yesterday, but then this happened, and this seems like it's far more important. It's a tribute, and before you guys uh, go looking this up yourself, we're not going to get political. Every single major media outlet, uh, they couldn't help themselves but to comment on Sheldon Adelson's political inclinations, and it was in every single headline what he did in terms of politics, and I think it's a shame that we can't remember a man who completely changed Las Vegas forever. Now's the point of the video where I'd usually, you know, do a commercial for face masks and all that stuff. It doesn't seem fitting today. Don't worry. There'll be lots of time for that in the future. Um, I just want to keep this just low key enough that we can talk about a man who changed everything. So, but I, I do have to tell you, if you like this video, like, share, subscribe, hit the bell for the future notifications and leave us a comment below and tell us uh, what you think about Sheldon Adelson, the Venetian, uh, the, uh, the uh, Palazzo, if you've been to any of his other properties. We're going to discuss all of that in this video today. Uh, Sheldon uh, lost his battle to non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, of which he was fighting for two years. And if there is anybody watching who knew him, they would tell you that he was a very nice person and that he did a lot for his community. We'll touch upon that in a minute. So this video, I hope you watch it. It's very important to get all the information out. So yeah, okay. So in 1933 in Dorchester, Massachusetts, there was a man born named Sheldon Adelson. And this guy was absolutely one of the most fascinating people that you'll ever kind of uh, hear about. You hear the term serial entrepreneur and you know these people that are always starting and stopping something. But this guy was taking risks at the age of 12. At the age of 12, he borrowed $200, which is the equivalent in 2017 money to $2,740 from his uncle to buy a newspaper selling license, dropped out of school and started selling newspapers. Uh, by the time he was 16, he went to the same uncle, presumably the same uncle, and he borrowed $10,000, which is the equivalent of $102,000 to buy a, a, a vending machine business for selling candy out of vending machines. By the time uh, he got a few years older, he went to City College in New York. He was trying to become a court reporter. He dropped out of that and then joined the Army. After serving in the Army, he uh, then started uh, just his first series of businesses. He had a business uh, selling toiletry kits, which, you know, the stuff that go into the restrooms with you uh, when people would travel, little kits. You'd pick those up in the travel section at a Walmart or a Target or a big box store. Uh, then he sold de-icing for car windows. So if you're from Massachusetts or like, uh, if you're like me, you're from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, you know that you can uh, sell de-icer kits. You might get some little kind of liquid to spray on there. It's one of those scrapers, and he was selling de-icing kits. Um, he was a he was basically a serial entrepreneur. He started a charter business. Um, who was taking people on tours all over the East Coast. And by the time he was in his 30s, the guy was a millionaire. Um, he lost his fortune two times during the course of his lifetime. And he had over 50 different businesses. 50 businesses. 50. Losing his fortune twice. Uh, by the 1970s, him and some investors uh, purchased Comdex, or invent, sorry, didn't purchase, they developed the idea of Comdex, which is why I mentioned the Consumer Electronics Show at the beginning of this video, because the Comdex was the computer in uh, the computer show before the uh, before the Consumer Electronics Show existed. So that's what it was. That was the big deal. Um, the Com Comdex show got so big and so massive that it was sold to SoftBank, a Japanese corporation, in the 90s for $862 million, of which Sheldon Adelson made $500 million, putting him an upper echelon in the 1990s of one of the wealthiest people in the United States. Of course, there's a lot more billionaires and stuff like that now, but it's different. Money is different. Wealth is different. Um, in 1988, he purchased the Sands Casino, which we now know is the iconic casino where Sammy Davis Jr. and the Rat Pack stood out front. I show you guys that on live streams. When we go out there, there's a big, huge statue out front. 
And in 1989, he did something that nobody had ever done before. He built the convention center, the Sands Convention Center, in the back of the Sands Resort. And nobody had ever done that before. This was the very first ever public or privately owned convention facility in the entire United States. It was the only private one, so he got to reap all of the benefits and collect all the monies. In 1991, his wife and himself took a trip to Venice, Italy, one of his wife's favorite cities. He uh, and her decided to uh, tear down the sands and build a $1.5 billion themed casino that we now know as the Venetian. And that, that casino is iconic. Uh, that right there <clears throat> took what Steve Wynn was doing over with properties like uh, the Mirage, and it just basically put it up and propped it up to a level that nobody had ever seen before. Um, so $1.5 billion property. When the Venetian opened in 1999, <clears throat> it was known as this uh, merger of, of absolute opulence with a theme, which was big in the 90s in Las Vegas. You know, we have the gondoliers, and we had the jesters inside of the courtyard, inside of the Grand Canal shops. The retail was huge. The shopping was huge. Everything was massive. And by the time uh, 2003 rolled around, he actually added on with a 1,113 all suite hotel called the Venezia Tower, just bolstering the value of the property. Okay, by 2004, the Sands Macau had opened. Macau, China was a former Portuguese uh, region, and in 1999, I believe it was, it got handed over to the Chinese government in a handoff. Uh, Macau had always existed, but there was no Vegas giant themed casinos, and he was the first one to ever do that. So by 2004, the Macau was the first Vegas style themed hotel and casino in all of Macau to ever open. It cost him $265 million, and he made that money back within the very first year of that property opening because it was such a big deal. And in 2004, Las Vegas Sands Corporation went public, just making him one of the richest people and individuals on the planet. In 2007, two different things happened. The Venetian and Macau opened up a $2.4 billion property. Just now, you got to remember how do people become billionaires? They become billionaires by owning lots of land and you know, lots of properties and lots of buildings and lots of assets. And he just kept adding to his assets. Uh, the Palazzo Las Vegas also opened in 2007 and by the time 2010 rolled around he paid a rumored but never really proven 5.5 billion dollars to get into the Sands Marina Bay project. Sands Marina Bay is an iconic property and it's just from there that we have all these little things that he did in Las Vegas. You know, for example, uh, he has tons of charities out here. He does children's uh, houses and helps kids. And, and uh, I could just go on and on. But the biggest thing, the most impactful recent thing that he's done was during our current pandemic situation. <clears throat> you got to remember what happened during the pandemic, right? All these properties in Las Vegas had to close. For 78 days, a lot of people took a cold heart to their employees, at least one owner that I won't go into because this is not the kind of purview. I don't want to have that attitude in this video. One casino owner in Las Vegas literally said, oh, let them line up for their government checks. I'm going to go ahead and uh, buy another property. Maybe I'll buy a baseball team. It was ridiculous. On the other hand, you had Sheldon Adelson across the street. And you know what he did? Well, he had 10,000 employees that worked for the Venetian and the Palazzo, those two properties. And uh, what he did was he paid everybody's salaries all the way through. 10,000 employees getting paid full-time salaries. And on top of that, if you were fortunate enough to work for a third-party restaurant vendor, meaning that you know the, the Sands Corporation didn't actually own the property or the, the restaurant that you worked at, you just happened to work in uh, at a restaurant that was in the property, he paid 1,200 extra restaurant employees full-time salaries to stay at home during that shutdown. I get a lot of criticism, you know, in Las Vegas for these casino moguls being greedy people, but Sheldon Adelson was not a greedy person. And uh, in the last two years of his life, he was battling for his life, okay? It was reported some years back that he was taking a leave for, you know, battling non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And then just last week, it was reported that he was taking another leave so he could go back to battle another round. And finally, you know, he decided to stop battling and um, he went to you know, a final resting point last night, Sheldon Adelson passed away at age 87. And uh, I think it's important to remember right now that a person's politics aside, it doesn't really matter. This man made impactful, well, I can't even, this man made an impact on the city of Las Vegas for a positive, uh, starting all the way back in 1988, 88, 98, 2008, 2000, 
no, it's 30, 30, 30 some odd years, right? So, you know, he, he really did good things for the city. And I hope that when it comes right down to it, I wish, I wish so much that, I just wish that these news outlets would erase the politics from the man's legacy for right now. There would be plenty of time to do a post-mortem, so to speak, maybe that's a bad term, to explore what he did with politics somewhere else. But why don't they report mega philanthropist Sheldon Adelson, who paid 11,200 11, plus employees to stay at home during the pandemic and paid them full-time salaries and who impacted people and made people's lives and careers happen and changed the city of Las Vegas. I guess forever and, and and brought millions and millions if not a billion people around the property around the world brought them some joy and happiness in their lives passed away at 87 that's what i'd like to see that headline read so i don't take loss very well and it's not like i'm blubbering and sad but i mean i am i'm let down you know, I, I don't, I never met the man, but he was a visionary. So as we uh, mourn the loss of some people in this world, just remember to remember the people for what they did that was positive. And uh, try not to say negative things about those who have passed away, even if you don't agree with their politics, because I would hate to see that <clears throat> be the legacy that you carry. We don't want to, we're only as good as the things we said. So there's a history on Sheldon Adelson. I hope you guys uh, found it interesting. I know I did as I was researching it because I knew some of the stuff, but not everything. Um, once again, my name is Steven and I'm not leaving Las Vegas. I hope you guys would like, share, subscribe, hit the bell for the future notifications. Come back to the channel tomorrow. We'll talk about my absence and how everybody seems to be worried about me. No reason to be worried. We're just busy and there's not a lot of news to report. Now's the time of the video where I say three, two, one, click, like, share, subscribe, hit the bell for the new future notifications. Three, two, one, and click.